Uh, hi. Well, uh, we being in the consulting space, we always keep on seeing this. Uh, there's definite interface between finance and legal. There's no doubt about it. And uh, there's, an, there's a lot of overlapping that keeps on happening. Uh, one of the important areas which we have seen is obviously the CF wants to keep the cost down. That's obviously one of the most important things and especially for a sector like ours, it becomes more critical in troubled times. And obviously the legal guy wants, does not want to expose himself to legal risks, uh, which has to be kept at bay all the time, extremely important again. So when, to give an example about uh, something like this is, uh, we are doing, uh, we are taking contract workers from uh, outside, any company. Now when you do that, uh, maybe the CFO is looking at the cost saying that fair enough, this contractor is uh, giving us a good uh, rate and the margins are much lower. But what the legal guy says, say he does not have a PF registration, does not have an ESIC registration, will fall into legal problems later on. So the interface becomes very, very critical. We all are very well aware of what happened with Marti uh, in case of contract labor. It's, a, it's in the public domain. So once that big brick sometimes or someday falls on us, we'll be in big trouble. Now, having said that, so what is the solution? Uh, does the CFO uh, say what he does because he needs to save his costs or the legal guy should be saying, no, then there has to be an interface. Well, if you ask, in my opinion, it is best to not go against the law. As I said, in, in Maruti's case, if someday something goes wrong, then you are going to be in deep, deep trouble and then it then it's flashed in the news and then your share prices will go tumbling down. We've seen that in a lot of recent cases also with companies as well. So that is what I think about uh, strong legal financial interface. Finance interface is very, very critical.